Do you make a New Year's resolution? Whether you do or you don't or you did and already gave it up, we have a much better way to start off the year through realigning yourself to God's will for the year ahead. So join us on today's episode as we pray a dangerous prayer together. He's a creature, but not the average kind. He's a creature, he'll make you laugh till you cry. He'll open your eyes and change your life with food for soul and pasteurized. Yeah, it's good for your heart, mind, body, and soul. It'll help you get to heaven, the ultimate goal. So come listen a while, you might be surprised. It's food for soul and pasteurized. His sarcasm might make you roll your eyes, but it's food for soul and pasteurized. Well, Happy New Year, and welcome back to the Unpasteurized Podcast. My name is Sarah Merriweather. And I'm Pastor Bruce Dickerson. And we are so glad that you are here and that you have found us here on our uh, on our new podcast, right? We're only in our sixth episode, and um, you can find us anywhere that you listen to podcasts as well as on our YouTube channel um, at youtube.com slash Jerome Church Online. So today... We are beginning a new series on prayer that we're going to do sort of through the months of January and February. And today's episode is a great transition between our last series um, and and where we're headed. So our last series was called Almost Christmas. I've still got the book sitting here. And it was uh, we were taking a look at the uh, the themes of Advent through a Wesleyan perspective. And today we are transitioning into this prayer series, starting off with the Wesleyan Covenant Prayer. Absolutely. It's one of my favorite prayers of the year. Uh, For most of the churches I've been at, we've done this around the new year, uh, and it just kind of sets the stage for the year. Uh, It's kind of a fresh start. Uh, But but before we get into the Wesleyan Covenant Prayer, you mentioned uh, New Year's resolutions. Do you do New Year's resolutions? Yeah, I didn't this year. Have yeah. you in the past? I have. And how did they go for you? Uh, usually not quite well. Uh, no. Yeah, mine are usually based off of eating. And I do really well until I run into a cookie or a cake. Uh, and then they all disappear. So I didn't set New Year's resolutions. But I actually like the Wesley Covenant Prayer in place of resol- uh, resolutions. I think they're uh, something different about a covenant. Yeah, and I would argue that in some ways it might even be more difficult. Just a little teaser. Yeah, absolutely. Right? I think it is. I, I think it is, it is a little more difficult. Yeah. So, so friends, we want you to get out your Bibles. Uh, one of our goals is to give you uh, some tools to be able to use to study the Bible on your own, uh, to be in the Bible every day. So, um, make, get a hard copy. Use your phone. The U version app is great. Uh, certainly, if you're driving or otherwise not at a place where you can get out your Bible, wait to do that. But our hope is that no matter what you do, that you make this a regular uh, daily habit. And that, you know, we find a way to be committed to being in God's word every day. And with that, let's go ahead and start with prayer and get into the Wesleyan Covenant. O most holy God, for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves to you as prodigals at your doorstep. We have fallen short because of our sins and are prone to the wickedness and evil in the world. But you have promised mercy to us in Christ, and you call us to turn to you with all of our hearts. Therefore, by the call of your gospel, we come now without reluctance to submit ourselves to your mercy. Amen. Amen. All right, so we're going to start off today uh, really just kind of with the basics. So, Pastor Bruce, what is the Wesleyan Covenant Prayer or or service? Kind of take us through the, the history background of that. Well, John Wesley, uh, it was really in his background, the background of his Puritans, who are parents who were more Puritan uh, in, in their beliefs. Uh, and so this was something they did as a family uh, and, and he grew up with. And it, it's very it's very Wesleyan, if you will. It's, an, it's another discipline. Uh, and so the whole idea of the Wesleyan Covenant actually began with a booklet that John Wesley had written for directions for renewing our covenant with God. And this renewing act, like I said, had been a part of his life for years. Uh, but it's an opportunity for us to at least once a year realign ourselves with God's will, uh, which is a little scary. Uh, we talked about this a little bit, and it's, it's a very dangerous prayer when you get sure down is. to it. But yeah. it's really that idea of realigning yourself with God. Uh, it's a form of repentance, if you will, uh, where uh, repentance is the idea that we are, uh, are missing the mark 
and therefore we are realigning with the target and the target is to become more christ-like to be you know to to be in a right relationship with god to reach that point of righteousness so in many ways it's the it's the ideal the idea of why people do new year's resolutions right we we find ourselves uh, by the end of the year maybe a little off track of how we want to be living our life in, in one way or another whether it's what we eat how we act what we do you know maybe our jobs what, whatever that aspect might be yeah except the one difference is, is oftentimes with resolutions it's it's what we want uh-huh. and with the idea of the covenant and realigning with god it's really god's will superseding our own but we'll talk about that a little bit more we sure will but but that's also as i teased earlier that's also what makes it more difficult absolutely right uh, but but how this wesleyan prayer started is in in the booklet that i talked about the directions for renewing our covenant with god by uh, john wesley he actually talks about ways of preparation before you take actually this covenant prayer mm-hmm. uh, and he and he starts it, it's five parts but to begin with first thing he talks about is confiding with god uh, and confiding with God is laying down your brokenness and, and seeking earnestly God's special assistance and gracious acceptance of you. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that confide in God that you, you, as Augustine would talk about, I'm a dirty, nasty towel tossed in the corner, but for your grace, Lord, uh, which sounds like a horrible statement, and it is, but it's actually what I believe is our state has broken humanity, separated from God. Uh, and so on some level, you just need to confide in God that this is what you are. So do, do you think that, just a quick side quest here, do you think that we sometimes try to hide who and what we are from God? Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Even more so sometimes than uh, we try to hide our real selves from other people. When we talked about authenticity mm. before, mm-hmm. um, the idea that we struggle to be our authentic selves with people. Uh, it was that idea of we talked about the difference between uh, an almost Christmas and altogether Christmas or an almost peace and altogether peace. It's still that idea that um, we try to hide from God uh, very much like uh, like Jonah. Uh, uh, when uh, In the biblical story of Jonah, uh, God said, go to Nineveh uh, because I want you to go to this place and give them a message. And, and Jonah said, no, I don't want to. I'm going to go hide from you. And so he actually... <laughs> Gets on a ship and tries to go to Tarshish, which is the farthest distance away from Nineveh as he can get. It's all, it's, we, and we constantly, throughout the scripture, try to hide from God, try to hide from one another. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so confiding in God, you know, uh, it's really just admitting who we are in so many ways. Yeah. Right? Okay. All right. So, what's number two there? Uh, number two is compose your spirit. Uh, John Wesley actually put second, compose your spirit into the most serious frame possible, suitable to a transaction of a very high importance. Well, Pastor Bruce, I would say this would be a challenge for people like you and I, that, uh, you know, we're on the unpasteurized podcast, right? We, we've we admitted that we like some sarcasm. And so composing our spirit might not always be the easiest thing to do. So how do we get in that frame of mind? Yeah, for some reason, the Disney song, Be Prepared, came to mind. Um, it's, it's, it's that aspect <laughs> of we have to... Um, for you and I, we've talked about throughout our friendship that there are hills we will die on. That's fair. Okay. Yes. And when we talk about those hills, we get very serious. Um, there's just certain things we don't... We, we just we don't joke around we with. We don't joke around yeah. with. Mm-hmm. Um, and even then, we can joke around with it, but there, there's something that... It's it's the aspect of being having your soul prepared to take this because it's very uh, serious. When we get into the prayer, some of the things that are uh, that are being said about either use me or set me aside... Mm-hmm. I can't joke about that. We can't. It's, right. it's, it's, you know, um, if you're going to take the prayer seriously, um, it's very serious. It's, it's, I, I kind of think about, um, at one point you said you had a friend who, uh, had listened to me online and then you were talking about me and they, and, and they said, that's the pastor because they, when I'm preaching and stuff, people go, oh, he can be serious, mm-hmm. you know? Well, I'm doing, I'm, it's, you know, has, this is the joking part of it. It's only people's souls hanging over the precipice of hell. It's only <laughs> the word of God. Right. Within that sarcasm, but there's a serious to that. Absolutely. Right. And so I think it's the same kind of thing where uh, the expectation is that you're, you're going to, uh, as if you're going into an important transaction, 
Um, so if you're going to buy a home, mm-hmm. maybe the most important transaction of your life, and it is a $200,000 home, $150,000 home, whatever whatever would be exotic for uh, whatever lifestyle you lead, a uh, half a million dollar home. Right. Um, are you going to go into that in a serious nature, go in and look and go, well, it's it's not worth this, but no, oh, whatever. No, you're going to be very serious about it. It's that kind of thing. Right. No. And and when we think about this, actually, it's going to good transition to the next part. We're, we're serious because we're talking about covenant. And when we think about the things that, you know, when we make a covenant, like, uh, like marriage is a covenant, for yes. example, right? Those are times where, where we want to make sure that we've composed our spirit to be, to be serious about it, to really understand um, what we're doing and what we're agreeing to, and also to honor the person or in in this case god that we're entering that covenant with right now we talk about this word covenant what is your understanding of covenant oh man put me on the spot but you know my understanding of covenant really is a it's a shared promise right it's an it's an agreement between um you know when you talk about marriage it's an agreement between two people um that we're going to love each other and and uphold the vows that we had within that promise uh, to love each other forever Okay, but how do we do that in a human framework? Uh, in a human framework? In, in a broken mankind or humankind. Well, I mean, sometimes not very well, right? If you look at the divorce rates in our country, right? right. Uh, so for marriage, as an example, sometimes not very well. Right, and, and, and don't get me wrong. We can get into the issue of divorce some other time because there are situations where uh, there's, two, oh. there's two parts to a covenant. Absolutely, you know? yes, uh, yes. And so if, even... Uh, I think the thing when we talk about covenant in this case is when we talk about broken humankind, um, we are able to break our side of the covenant. When we are dealing with covenant with God, or if you want to call Mm -hmm. it a contract Mm -hmm. with God, we are dealing with God who won't break the contract, will always uphold what the contract says. It's not within God's nature to not uphold the covenant. And therefore, the only way the covenant can be broken in this case is through us. Right. And we see examples of that in the Bible. Absolutely. For sure. And we'll get to that actually a little teaser. We'll get to that during the season of Lent. Yeah. We will. Um, So, okay. So so number three in this five-step process is to claim the covenant. So we're actually going to hold off on steps four and five and move into claiming this covenant and and actually talking through the Wesleyan covenant prayer itself. Yeah. And I actually like what John Wesley said in his uh, his, uh, brochure, his booklet that he put Mm -hmm. out when it comes to claim the covenant. Third, grab hold of God's covenant and rely upon God's promise of giving grace and strength whereby you may be enabled to perform your promise. Trust not your own strength or the strength of your own resolutions, but take hold of God's strength. Uh, and so it's we're not even able to uphold the covenant. What we, are, what we are claiming is we are claiming the fact that it's only through God uh, and trusting in God first that we're able to uphold the covenant. Yep. There we go again. That was our theme all through uh, almost Christmas, right? That all of these themes of an altogether hope, joy, peace, and love can only happen with God's help. So always with so, God's help. So here we are again, right? Um, okay, so so take us through the prayer, Pastor Bruce. Well, um, this is a dangerous part of the Wesleyan Covenant prayer. It is. And so I'm going to read through it, but then we're going to go back and talk about it a little bit. Okay. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt, rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee, exalted for thee or brought low for thee. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine and I am thine. So be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Oh. 
How can you not be serious <laughs> about that prayer? That's pretty I, serious I mean, it's, it's giving, as I've said in the past, I'm not a person of extremes. Uh, I, I live in this gray area a lot of times because we live in a world which tries to make everything black and white, right and wrong. And it, uh, and, and for some things, that there are, is black and white, right and wrong, good and evil. But in other things, uh, there's a lot of uh, grace that needs to be given. Mm-hmm. But, but, I mean, this is just laying it forth. I mean, th- the major part of this prayer is something that has broken humanity. We stink at. And that's submission. Oh, for sure. We want it our way. We live in a Burger King world. Uh, I want it my way right now. <laughs> uh, we live in that vending machine of I want what I want when I want it, and for a buck fifty, mm-hmm. I can have it. Right. It's a lot smaller than it used to be a few years ago, but you can have it. But but it, it's this idea of extremes is, you know, you're basically saying I'm I'm not my own. It, and that's really why we wanted to start. Just a, a quick aside, why we wanted to start our series on prayer with the Wesleyan Covenant prayer is that I think, you know, even at people that maybe have been a Christian their whole life, sometimes we do think of prayer as like this vending machine idea that I pray it and and it happens. And, you know, there's, I want to say there's maybe a sliver of truth to that, right? Um, But there's, there's a whole but along that, and then that's but we have to be aligned with God's will. And so, you know, this whole idea of submitting to God's will for us in our lives, I think is, is scary, um, can be scary, and, and is dangerous only because we are giving up what we perceive as our own control right. in our lives. But, but also, do we trust in God? And I, I, that's why the period, I believe, starts off the way it does. I am no longer my own, but thine. Mm-hmm. God is going to take care of you. God is going to do the right thing. That is within God's nature. And if you believe that and trust that, then we can trust what God's going to do with our lives. And so if I trust God, if I if I go, God, uh, I am not my own, but I am yours. Mm-hmm. I am your child. I love you. I trust you. So That trust has to come first. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so now put me to work. Or set me aside. Oof. Put me to doing or put me to suffering. Right. And that's the one that scares me. I mean, we're I'm I'm literally in some ways giving God permission to allow me to either you know, be set aside and to suffer. Mm-hmm. That seems scary. Yeah. There there are moments in my life I would confess I'm not sure I'm ready to pray that prayer. Is it a lack of trust? Maybe. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's a, I mean, it's a challenge, ultimately, right? that's what yeah. it comes down to is, as a Christian, um, we are to trust in God. But in our American Western world, we're taught to pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps and take care of ourselves. If, if I don't look out for number one, who will? Right. Well, we're not called to look out for number one. We're called to look out for other people. Right. Uh, we are made for relationship. Right. It's that whole love God, love people thing, right? right. You, I mean, it, that, that silly little statement that, we make. That silly that, that silly little that, statement. Um, you know, these are, these are tough uh, for me. Even when you trust God, when we hear phrases in this prayer, like, let me be employed for thee or laid aside for thee, exalted for thee. That one seems easy, right, in our culture. Um, but, but the hard one is, or brought low for thee. I mean, but 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 listen to this. This prayer could easily read this: "I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing. Let me be employed. Exalted for thee. Let me be full. Let me have all things." You know, if you take the first half of the things, those are the things we want and expect. Right. Sounds good. But is that God's will for us? There is why it's dangerous, yeah. right? Because this prayer really is us making a covenant with God to submit to God's will for us in our lives when I think so often as humans, we would much rather have the first half and not the second half. Yeah, I mean, listen to the second half. It, this is kind of fun. Uh, put me to suffering. Uh, lay me aside for thee. Bring me low for you. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Yeah. Let me be empty. Let me have nothing. I don't want those things. Yeah, but actually, it's 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 weird. One of the one of the parts of this that always speaks, uh, 
for me is, is let me be empty. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite scripture passage is in uh, Philippians. Uh, it's also it's commonly known as the Kenosis hymn, uh, where it talks about Christ emptying himself out even to the point of death on the cross. Uh, and that's something I pray fairly regularly is, is uh, Lord, fill me up so that I may be poured out. Mm -hmm. um, because that's what we're supposed to do as Christians. We're supposed to pour ourselves out. And so we talk about, uh, like, you'll still sometimes ask me how I'm doing. I said, I feel empty. And you're like, that's not good. Well, in some ways it's good because if I've been poured out, I've been used by God. That's right. Like, like for example, when you do a, a funeral for someone, I know that that's something that you take very seriously. Um, and, and there have been times I've asked you, how are you doing after that? Particularly if it's been someone you know, love, care for deeply. And, and that has been your answer. Well, I feel empty. That's not always a bad thing. Right. Right. Um, it means, it, it, no. <laughs> That's why we have pastor naps on Sunday. It's <laughs> <That's> fair. <laughs> but, but you know, I, I do, I, those are the nuances of this. I always think a little bit when I read through this prayer um, of the Beatitudes, right? Of this whole idea of blessed are those that have, you know, these things that we don't expect to be blessings. Right. right. Blessed are the poor in spirit. <laughs> right. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are, you know. I, and, and, the, the peacemakers. Yeah. The things that are hard to do, blessed are those. And so it, it's really, I think, a, something that takes, um, you know, and, and God allows us to make this covenant to be in God's will. God's will is God's will for us. But we have this opportunity in many ways to agree to it. And I think that is what... Um, when I say dangerous, I don't always mean that in a bad way. Dangerous, and if we truly submit to God's will, how much more might God do and have planned for us than we can ever imagine for ourselves? I think of uh, Scripture in Ephesians um, 3.20, where God says, you know, I will do abundantly more than you can ever ask or imagine. Do we believe that? Because if we do, then this prayer becomes a good kind of dangerous. Right. right, but but it's giving up, possibly giving up everything that we think brings us comfort and hope, and actually accepting those things that will give us comfort and hope, because <sighs> it's because it's a life lived out in God. Right. Um, like part of this prayer talks about. I mean, it's really talking about your resources. Uh, I I freely and heartily yield all things. You know, let me have all things, or let me have nothing. Mm -hmm. um, if God came to you and asked you to give up your home, mm -hmm. would you? I'd like to say yes. I'd, I'd like to say yes. It's a, uh, right? I mean, I'm not presented with yeah. that. It's easy for me to sit here today and be like, oh, yeah, sure. You know, but when push comes to shove, I, that for me is why prayers and covenants like this are are dangerous. Because am do I trust God? Absolutely. But am I really, when push comes to shove, am I really that willing? That'll be a harder day. Yeah. And see, home, like home for me is a very special idea, mm -hmm. uh, is I never moved around as a kid. I was born and raised in the same house until my mom passed away the, earlier this year. Mm -hmm. um, her house was home. Yeah. You know, and we're probably going to sell her house and stuff coming up. But, I, you know, and that place was always home. But also when I had a family and stuff, that became home. But I, then I became a pastor. And so we had bought our own house and it was home for... 12 years mm -hmm. and then I'm itinerant pastor so called by God sent by the bishop uh, and so the bishop sent me to Mount Oreb and there was a house there and we lived there for five years uh, and, and I realized I was moving my daughter around and I was moving mm -hmm. my wife around and that could be noon jobs and things like this uh, I've had to change my understanding of what a home is um, because it's no longer a house right. you know but at one point that was very important to me to have those kind of roots and I don't have those kind of roots but I've never been happier in my life um, in this itinerant lifestyle um, yeah there's frustration stuff to it but I'm being used by God and so there's there's a trade-off um, and, and I'm better for it I've not because I'm doing what God's called me to do uh, and so it's that it's that aspect is, is by opening up and allowing this to happen we're really allowing God mm -hmm. to work through us and be called to what God is truly doing in our life. It, it maybe is that idea of like good to great, but in the spiritual realm. What are the good things I have in my life that I cling to that I think are what make me happy? 
right? Maybe it's my house, maybe it's my job, maybe it's my car, maybe it's my clothes, whatever. What are those things that are good, but God has something great planned, right? Maybe there are even plans that I have in my life that I've made that I think are good, but God promises something great. You know, what are we willing to give up for God's greatness to enter our lives? Yeah, and in some of the future podcasts when we're talking going through this series, I know we're going to end up talking about uh, God's will, what it means, how we live that out, but also uh, what God allows us to do. It's a blessing, even if we don't see it in that morning, uh, a moment. Uh, suffering can be a blessing. How? Well, we'll talk about that. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's not an easy understanding. It, it is not. So so as we wrap up this prayer, um, it, you know, we actually did this as a sermon series a few years back, and we entitled it, uh, So Be It. And so to me, that really is the part of the prayer when it says, um, you know, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine and I am thine. So be it. What does that mean to you, Pastor Bruce? It's once again an acknowledgement of the submission to God's will. Mm-hmm. It's greater than we are. Um, God gave us um, free will and we use it. But that act of love towards God is submitting your own free will to God's will. That, that's a powerful thing. And once yeah. again, it's that word submission that we know because we're taught never surrender. <laughs> you know, um, but it, it is a countercultural idea. But I'm surrendering right? to something better. Yeah. And so and then these last lines, right, which sounds familiar uh, if you pray the Lord's Prayer, frankly. Um, and so it is in the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Uh, those, that's a powerful way to end this prayer that we're not just talking about this earthly covenant. We're talking about a, an eternal one. Right. Right. That's huge. Yeah, and, and, and may God approve of this covenant that we're making. Ooh, I sure hope so. We'll find out. <laughs> we will. All right. So, uh, you know, we talked earlier, number two, got to compose our spirit. We've got to be serious. We've been a little bit serious for a while. So we're going to take a small break in the action, okay? And our fun fodder for the day is... Uh, we're going to talk about vacation spots, favorite vacation spots. Yeah, I, I, I missed our last podcast. I was sick. Uh, luckily, I, I was in uh, COVID isolation for five days, uh, got out uh, in time for masking and then for Christmas Eve. So it all worked out. I covered all the service I need to. Uh, but Tara was here. Hopefully you all enjoyed Tara. She'll be a guest sometime also. She's great. Did a great uh, job. Did an awesome job. We also have to do Christmas gifts sometime because Tara got us something both cool. But we'll do that maybe next time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but vacation spots. I was in deep need of a vacation. Uh, now is the time of confession. Is I stink at taking vacation. How long had it been, Pastor Bruce? Well, the first Sunday I'd had off in about, well, over a year uh, was the Sunday uh, where uh, my mom was in the hospital just before she passed away. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I got that Sunday off and uh, another Sunday off later on. Right but after Thanksgiving. Right after was Thanksgiving. your first Sunday. Yeah. But uh, a vacation where I went away with my family, it had been a year and a half. Sometime. Uh, and so we usually go to Sanibel Island down uh, uh, in Florida, but Sanibel had a hurricane still recovering. So we went someplace new. We went to Tybee Island, Georgia, uh, which we were hoping would be warm. Uh, it was warmer. Uh, it was some days in the 50s, which for us northern folk is, is good hearty sweatshirt weather. You sent me a picture while you were there and said, I wish they would stop putting heaters on me while I'm eating outside, which made me laugh. Yeah, is, 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 uh, I worked in the restaurant world and they have something called a salamander, which is what they melt cheese and stuff uh-huh. under. It's like a, it's just a heater <laughs> that they put the food under. And they would put these giant porch heaters above me. And I was like, would you move that? And they're like, really? It's cold. I was like, no, I'm from the north. This is great weather. Get that thing away from hey, me. You're in shorts, right? <laughs> yeah, it was just, you know, not quite shorts, but just a sweatshirt and comfortable yeah. eating and stuff. And so Taipei Island, Georgia, food was great. Uh, view was great at the Atlantic. Uh, we collected some shells. We walked around. We saw some history things. Uh, yeah, one of the I found some. Uh, I sent a message to Sarah. There was some J Dub history. Some J Dub history. Is yeah. uh, as she likes to refer to John Wesley. Can't believe I said that. 
Um, but what it was is uh, the island next to Tybee Island where there was a, a fort uh, since the time of the Revolutionary War called Fort Pulaski. I get out and there's one of those historical signs and it was the landing spot of John Wesley in America uh, that was like quarter of a mile away. So, I, so I, cool. So I hobbled down there and took a picture uh, and I'll get you a copy of that picture so you can post it. Uh, with the podcast, uh, with his journal entry and stuff. But but it's where he landed uh, when he came to America as a missionary in Georgia uh, and then failed miserably, which is a different story we'll tell sometime. Yeah, but, we, we probably will. But I, I just I thought it was hilarious. What uh, a true vacation for a United Methodist pastor to, to go and find some John Wesley history. <laughs> it made everything complete. It was just it just made me laugh. Um, so I also had the pleasure of, of going on vacation. That's why we've been away for a couple of weeks. And um, I went to my happy place, which is down in the United States Virgin Islands. Um, we spent some time on the island of St. Thomas and a couple of nights uh, at, a, at a campground on the island of St. John and a day on Joost van Dyke in the British Virgin Islands. And um, I am refreshed and renewed and um and we will, we, we actually, as we were talking about this, we realized that, you know, Sabbath is one of those ideas that, um, a little bit like covenants, it's maybe something that, you know, we'll explore on a future future podcast. We'll look forward to that. Uh, Bruce and I are not the foremost experts on Sabbath. In fact, we're both pretty bad at it. Um, we uh, suck. I'll just yeah, say it. We are yeah, terrible yeah. at Sabbath. Yep. Yeah, but, uh, but we will explore that on a future podcast. So, um, you'll see some pictures up on there. I'll put some pictures from both of, both of our vacations. But uh, it's good to be back, but it was good to be away too. Yeah, but don't be a friend of Sarah because when she goes on vacation, she see, she sends webcam uh, of which beach she's at. And it's kind of like, where's Waldo? And it turns into, man, I'm cursing Waldo on the beach. Yeah, it's all right. We, I had a lot of fun. It was great. Good time with the family. So. All right, so let's get back uh, to the Wesley Wesleyan Covenant prayer today. Uh, so, Pastor Bruce, we've prayed the prayer. We've done steps one and two. What now? What happens after you pray this prayer? Oh, well, what John Wesley recommends, uh, once again, in his booklet is choose faithfulness. Uh, resolve to be faithful, having engaged your hearts, opened your minds, and subscribed with your hands to the Lord. Resolve in his strength never to go back. Right. And that was the the phrase that struck me was resolve to never go back. That, you know, we talked at the beginning of this podcast today about, you know, if you made a resolution, did you already drop it? Right. Did you already stop it? And this isn't just your typical, you know, new way to start the year. This is uh, a commitment that we don't ever want to go back on. It's a lifelong commitment. And I think the question we have to ask is, do you trust God enough to pray this prayer and live it every day? I think that's part of it, but I think it's almost a little deeper than that. Oh, okay. uh, it's, it's like the uh, woman in scripture, uh, he who casts the first, uh, he without sin casts the first stone. Yeah. And they all drop their stones and walk away after they, they are thinking about stoning this woman who committed adultery. And then Jesus tells the woman, is there anybody else left to uh, to convict you? And she mm-hmm. says, no, neither do I. Go and sin no more. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. How am I going to do that? <laughs> uh, you know, it's that aspect. But once again, it goes back uh, to... I preach it a lot as we can go on to Christian perfection in this life with God's help. Um, do we trust God enough? Do we trust Christ enough that we are able to sin no more? Mm. That we mm-hmm. don't have to go back? Uh, are we going to lean into our new nature in Christ or are we going to lean into our old broken nature? Or with this prayer, are we going to lean into the first half of the phrases or be okay with the second half trusting that? That God's got us. What, what do you mean you're going to take away everything? No, nope, take it back. <laughs> Keep it in my house. Right. That's uh, a choice. That's the free will. It is. Um, and so then we move into, you know, really this this last part, which I think is a great setup for uh, the rest of the series for us together. And it is um, the fifth thing that John Wesley tells us to do. Yeah, it's, it's connect to God in prayer. Fifth and last being the being thus prepared, at some convenient time set apart for the purpose, get to work. 
in the most solemn manner possible, as if the Lord were visibly present before your eyes, fall down on your knees, and spreading forth your hands towards heaven, open your hearts to the Lord. That really almost connects with the, the, the first one in a lot of ways, where we're to confide in the Lord. Mm-hmm. you got to keep on confiding in the Lord. It's Stop. kind of a cycle, right? If, if you fall short, go back and, and you know, it's, it's not like go to jail, do not pass go, do not collect $200. It's, uh, it's that idea of, nope, I'm here. Confide in me. Pick yourself up. Dust yourself off. Keep on going. Keep on going. Uh, there was a phrase in the book that said, prayer is the lifeblood of a person's relationship with God. Um, and, and I love that. I think a question that, you know, maybe it's certainly a question I've had. And so I imagine some of our listeners watching or watchers may have the same question is, does God answer our prayers? Always. Right? Yes, but. Always. The answer may be yes. The answer may be no. Right. The answer may be not yet. Right. Or it may be in an unexpected way that you don't realize. But God always answers prayer. And, and our prayers, you know, get answered when they're aligned with God's will. Yeah, and we're going to get into that uh, much more uh, in the weeks to come. Uh, is scripture is filled with the promises of God, the things God has done in the past. Uh, but oftentimes we, we hold prayer in such a way as that prayer for that person, so it came true for them, but that's not meant for me. But it's a possibility. Absolutely, it's a possibility. And so, you know, I think some things we want to think about as we move into this rest of our series on prayer, um, and it's good advice, I think, for every day, is really how do we know God's will? Uh, Through the means of grace. Mm -hmm. Uh, Through We know God's will through Scripture. We Absolutely. know God's will through prayer. Mm-hmm. We know God's will through study. We know God's will through worship. Um, these are all things. Uh, that's why we stinking Methodists are so methodical, or at least we're supposed to be, about the disciplines, because those are connections of God. Uh, means of grace is what John Wesley described as, uh, in my own word, highways by which God pours out God's love towards us. Uh, but highways are two ways. It's also how we communicate back and forth with God. Right. So, you know, if you're asking the question, does God still speak? Yes. Uh, you'd better believe it. Right. God still speaks. But um, but we've got to take some action to hear. Yeah. I mean, one of the books that we're looking at is uh, Circle Maker mm-hmm. uh, by uh, Mark Batterson. Mar- Mark Batterson. We're using some of that for this prayer series. Uh, and, and he really talks about um, we act like miracles don't happen. We act like God has stopped speaking. Uh, God, miracles are still happening. Um, Amen. God is still speaking. Um, the Holy Spirit is still working within us, changing us, transforming us, convicting us with necessary, carrying us when we're too weak, teaching us all those things, uh, all forms of communication uh, back and forth with God. But how we pray and how we understand how prayer works plays a big part in the miracles we see. It absolutely does. I think there are so many times where, um, and and again, just the teaser for what's ahead, we don't pray big enough prayers because we limit them to our understanding instead of God's understanding. And God is much bigger than we are. God is so much bigger than we are. So we're going to end on that idea today. So what have we Um, covered today? So today, uh, really, we've taken a look at the Wesleyan Covenant Prayer. So if you've ever, uh, you know, wondered what that was or want to know more about it, um, hopefully we we walk through that with you. And really, it is all about surrendering and realigning yourself with God's will for your life, in this case, in the new year ahead. If you're going to make a resolution, that's the one. This is the one for sure. Uh, you know, we also talked about how this prayer can change you um, and it's, and how it's important to understand what you're praying, that it can be a dangerous prayer, not in a bad, dangerous way necessarily. Um, but because we know that we can trust God, we can trust his good and perfect plans and his perfect timing in our lives. Right. Uh, and but and third, it's also important to remember that we stay connected to God through uh, the means of grace, by reading the Bible and praying uh, daily. Mm-hmm. Uh, what would it look like to 
uh, tithe your time to God. We've talked about that. If you took 10% of your waking day and put it into prayer right. and service and reading scripture, what would that look like? Uh, you know, 10% of your waking hours. That's right. Uh, that'd be an amazing thing. But the important thing is, is just stay connected with God through worship, through small groups, all these ways, all these means of grace uh, where God is pouring out God's grace and love on us. And it is daily discipline, not just on Sunday, not just as a New Year's resolution. It's day in and day out, our relationship and connection with God. And what do we call that? That is a long long obedience in the same, in the same direction, direction um, which really is what the definition of disciple is. Which is another book we'll talk about someday. Sure is. That's a great book. All right, friends. So if you have a question, if you want to learn more, or um, if you're if you're going through something that we can be praying for or with you, I want to give you some ways to contact us. So you can email us at podcast at jeromechurch.org, or you can comment on the platforms where you're listening or watching. We do check those. Um, again, you can find our podcast, all the places where you listen to audio, as well as on our YouTube channel at uh, youtube.com slash Jerome Church Online. Uh, so we're on a new schedule now. We'll have new episodes uh, dropping each week on Mondays. And as we mentioned, we'll be working through the series on prayer through January and February. And there are some powerful, dare we say, even spiritually life-changing opportunities coming up. So I just want to encourage you, don't miss it. So until next time. I'm Pastor Bruce. And I'm Sarah. And this has been the Unpasteurized Podcast. Come listen a while. You might be surprised. It's food for so unpasteurized.